Hey guys, Ryan Earnhardt here from creativesoundlab.tv. Well, you know, before I start this video, I want to say thanks for being a part of uh, kind of the swarming over to Recording Studio Loser. I, you know, I just kind of got uh, kind of a random hunch that, you know, I should go and uh, see what we can do. It kind of is a collective of people. Just go and subscribe and make somebody's day. And, uh, we hit like a couple hundred extra subscribers than what he had. He had like 600 at the time. I was like, cool, you know? Like, yeah, like th that's a nice way to start a Friday, you know? And by, I think, Monday, it had gotten to about 2,000. Now it's like 5,000. So, uh, thanks to you guys. I mean, I'm just making a video, and I just recorded a five-minute video. But because you each individually decided to... Uh, take up the call and go and subscribe, you made somebody's day. Now that person could do uh, live streaming, you can get tips, you can uh, get monetization. So you kind of gave somebody a career out of YouTube, uh, kind of overnight. So you guys were a part of that. Again, I'm just a guy making a video with a Gmail account, okay? Keep that in mind. This video is about the 5020 Stereo Fet Limiter by M House Studios. Now, I had uh, met these guys uh, at Summer Nam of 2019, and I approached their booth, and they had like a, a like a like a home printed. I was gonna say hand printed, but it was like a home printed sign that said, you know, the name of their product. It was totally grassroots, and there was something that I wanted to see what was going on. You know. A lot of times with musicians, their coolest stuff happens towards the early part of their career when they're just full of passion. They're just going out to make their mark in the industry. And I saw kind of this very down to earth booth that wasn't anything too extravagant. And I, it really piqued my curiosity. And this stereo limiter sounds so freaking cool. I mean, I've never really heard anything like it. And this is one of my most favorite uh, ways to treat a drum bus. Uh, you know, I, I just, I, I don't know anything else that kind of gets this effect. It's almost like um, using like a crush mic where you put like a mic in the middle of the kit and compress uh, the hell out of that. And it's kind of that same effect of like parallel processing but you also get some some meat and heft uh, from the 5020. So I want to show you kind of a few of the settings I've been playing around with uh, as far as this compressor goes and just kind of have some fun with it today on drum bus. So let's kick it off with the track and then we'll dive into the drum specifics. <laughs> Well, there's no change in Montana. She's a woman knows her needs. You better give her what she wants so she never begs and pleads. Yeah, women come and women go. That's what makes this world go round. If you ever lose Montana, boy, you never live it. You won't forget Montana Once the shot's been seen You see your eyes are made of diamonds And the heart is made of dreams Yeah, women come and women go But please don't hit my sound If you ever see Montana, boy You better turn yourself around She run it dry She run it dry Don't even try Really cool track by Hustle Souls called Montana. 
Uh, let's dig into the drums here. It just, it just sounds angrier. It sounds like, raw. Uh, it's just amazing how cool it sounds. And what's really interesting is to actually play the video from this, and the guy is barely moving. I mean, the guy has such a great pocket.
I mean, there's some settings that are too extreme, but I just really like all that this can do. I mean, this is a real winner here. This is something that's it's really unique. I don't know any other uh, thing that can do something like this. Now, if I were to guess, I've never had my hands on like a um, like a, a Fatso, but if I had to guess something like that where it's uh, kind of big and gooey sounding, I don't know. I'm just kind of taking a you know stab in the dark there, but there's just something to this that just adds a lot of weight, a lot of compression gooiness, and I just love how you can kind of hear the air of the room kind of it's not really pumping, but it's definitely bringing up kind of the ambience of the room. So yeah, it's really cool. Now, a few things about the settings. Uh, you know, we have uh, input, which is really the amount of compression. Just like uh, 1176, you know, ramping up that input increases the compression. We have attack, release. Uh, character is kind of a few things rolled into one. The way that I kind of describe it is that you get a little bit more low end. It's almost like having, um, almost like a side chain high pass where it's letting some of the low end through and not completely getting weighed down by the low end. However, I don't think that's actually the case uh, because there actually is a side chain. Um, there's just something about the character and I usually have it about, you know, three, four o'clock there, about, you know, 70, 80% of the way up. I just love the sound of the low end with the character cranked like this. Uh, with it turned all the way down, it tends to um, be more of a direct, typical compression type sound where everything that goes in gets compressed. And it's almost like with the character, it's like, it almost like part of it's getting split and EQ'd and it's kind of dry and the other part is getting compressed and Somehow you end up with more low end and just a really cool sounding compression. Almost kind of like all buttons in mode in a way, but with some e low end boost in there, I don't know what it's doing, but it's really cool. Uh, blend, I mean, this is a fantastic feature for something that's so aggressive like this 5020. And then finally the output. Now I've noticed, you know, it does take a lot of kind of trimming by hand. So you have to adjust the output as you adjust the blend. A lot of times I kind of leave the input alone because, I mean, to be honest, anywhere on the dial, it's it's compressing quite a bit. Um, so my main kind of adjustment is the attack release, the blend and the output. Now it has a couple different stereo modes, the left, right, um, the AC and the DC. I think the AC is where um, basically the stuff is summed together um, so if, say, the floor tom hits really hard on the right, it's not going to compress that side more than the left, okay? It would be triggered by the kind of aggregate or the sum, I guess, of both things. So if it gets triggered, both channels left and right would be reduced simultaneously. So it kind of keeps your stereo image even. The left and right doesn't do that. Um, so it's really nice to have kind of that, that uh, option to switch. Uh, but then the DC is really cool. Uh, it's even more aggressive, if you can imagine. Um, I mean, this is a great setting unit as is, but if you need it even more aggressive, uh, you can go to DC. And I'll let you hear what that sounds like in, in a second. Then we have the actual sidechain high pass. So uh, right now it's at uh, uh, 100. Then we have the meter as far as what it's showing. So it's showing the average. Uh, when we first started out, it was showing the instantaneous um, peaks. So it's kind of scary to see the instant uh, peaks. It's almost like, whoa, that thing is really, you know, completely lopping off my sound. So it's a little less scary to keep it on average. Of course, we have the output. But a lot of times I'll, you know, monitor my output via my uh, interface because it's all about the input uh, to make sure I don't clip digital in. So let's check out that uh, left, right, AC, and DC uh, modes. And I'll go back to uh, the beginning here.
So in left, right, it's almost like two compressors. Um, then you go to AC. It's almost like uh, linking them. That full tom really is the the kind of tell as far as what mode you're in. Hear it? Kind of darts across. Left, right. Okay, so it's it's subtleties that you have and it's available to you as an option. Okay, it's really cool just to have that as a sound sculpting tool. Not that one is uh, wrong or right, but I think for this production for drum overheads, I like the AC. Now let's go into the DC. And uh, this is supposedly the most aggressive setting. I don't completely understand it, but let's just give it a listen. Keep in mind, this is only 6 dB of average gain reduction. So it's actually a little more than that, but you know, as far as kind of the, you could say RMS, uh, VU meter style metering, it's like not a whole lot, right? This thing is just crazy cool, crazy colorful. Uh, let's check out a few other features here, like the, uh, the high pass, uh, I'll show you the, the metering and stuff. Uh, and I'll just kind of keep giving you some settings to here. Yeah, so, you know, obviously it's not a fair comparison to have the compressed sound a little louder than the dry sound, so I try to level match that as best I can. Um, 
you can hear what it's doing though. Okay, uh, it's just making it sound more alive, more like a party. And I think that's really cool, really appropriate for the track. Okay, uh, let's see here. We did a little bit of the high pass uh, side chain, and I'll show you the metering real quick. Uh, so yeah, check this out. Yeah, so, I mean, this thing's a lot of fun. I actually had this going on the Trash Can Reverb video, and I didn't want to make the video super long. Uh, I actually had a breakdown in the video about kind of what's going on, and this is on the overheads, this is on whatever. For the overheads that day, I actually had the uh, Vanguard Audio V1s in cardioid. It sounded fantastic. And then I had the whole mix, actually, of that trash can reverb drum mix. It was actually going through the 5020. Um, I didn't want to get sidetracked, obviously. Um, wanted to focus more on that special effect trash can reverb. But um, this set to about where it is now, about 10 o'clock on the blend, so maybe 30 to 40%. And I had it uh, very similar settings, actually. Uh, you know, attack and release, and I had it on the AC and the 100. And this is a great uh, drum bus uh, setting for me, at least. You know, it kind of is like a cheat. Uh, it sounds bigger than what it did before. You can blend it in. So yeah, I've had a lot of fun with this thing. Um, I'm lucky that I get to play around with cool stuff like this. Let me know what you think I should try next on the 5020. Stereo Effect Limiter by M House Studios. Really cool guys. Uh, go check out their website. Uh, they're, you know, guys like us. Uh, they play music and they're making really cool gear. So I'd love to know what you think of this video. Hanging out in the comments below. I don't come crying to me. You see, a kiss is full of venom, and the touch will make you bleed. Oh, women come and women go. That's how it will always be. What if I ever see my tan again? You know I beg a